then we saw Warren Sapp talking to BJ Green and his impression of BJ Green, which was was lights out. He said he was very impressed with him and his motor and such. So, um, and then we'll highlight uh, the linebackers. But uh, first off, BJ Green, man, he he's really been impressed. We talked about him a little bit last last week, but then now Warren Sapp comes out and talk about his first impression of him. And uh, I'm not I'm not sure if you heard what he said, but he's posted it. It's been posted on Well Off uh, Media's page, and he just talked about his get off and how how well he does that and how he can work inside and outside. The same thing we highlighted last week. Um, any other updates on BJ Green and how have you seen him uh, kind of like emerging as that guy on the defensive line? I got a real simple one for you, man. That that I heard just today from Coach Prime's Coach Prime's mouth to Green's ears, and that's simply this: Dog, you're a pro. You are a pro, and you got a, as as a guy who is a pro that I believe in. You know, you got to lead, and you got to lead from the front. Sometimes you'll see Green uh, in an effort to work harder. He may not necessarily work with his position group because he's so much faster than him. He'll go over with with the uh, skill of the combos, but he's middle of the pack or behind that group. And so, what Coach yeah. Piper said, "No, nah, dog." You know, lead your group or find a way to lead that one. You can't be in a rut where you're, where you're the last at something, even though you're stepping up a weight class, so to speak. You know, if you're going to mm-hmm. go over there, you got to push yourself and beat them too. Uh, but, man, his work ethic, his drive, his get off, his intellect toward the game certainly is going to make an impact on this team and has that propensity to play on Sundays. I tell you this, Chico, he came to me and he said, look, I want you – to pick the offensive line. He's talking to me, Uncle Neely now, 50 year old me. He said, you get behind the line, you pick them. He said, I bet you I can get to you 10 out of 10. <laughs> I said, man, ain't no way. I said, first of all, I'm gonna be in shotgun and I'm gonna, I'm already <laughs> for the ball snap and I'm, I'm broken <laughs> to the yeah. I said, get to pick which side you come from. He said, man, I don't care what you pick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to you. So you may be seeing that, that drill soon on the pregame show. Hey man, I love I love to see that. Even if you don't share publicly, sh- shoot it to your boy. I- I'll definitely love to watch that. But that's BJ Green coming up to you saying that. That's confidence. Oh like, yeah, he's like man, you yeah. you pick the lineman. Yeah, Damn. yeah. He he's very okay. confident. now. One thing I love about, and I know we're gonna get into it in some in some future episodes. One thing I love about uh, what Coach Sapp is doing with this defensive line and Coach D Lewis, uh, as well as Coach Dancy and Coach Phil Lodeho doing over the offensive line. These guys are making each other better, man. You know, when when Coach Sapp is giving a guy a tip on how to beat a lineman and it works, you got to understand yeah. that lineman is learning from that as well. So every day, iron is sharpening iron, and these guys are going up against some of the best coaching as well as players that they will see in conference play all year long. So the trenches are going to be much improved, man. All right, here we go. We're going to final, finalize this and uh, conclude this on – the trenches, but we're going to go with the linebackers rather than just the defensive line. The linebackers were headed up last year by Levante Bentley and Trevor Woods. They are still there as seniors, but we brought in a slew of other linebackers that could really play uh, with the um, additions of – you still. well, I'll say this. You still have J- Jeremiah Brown yeah. uh, there at linebacker, but then you bring in a guy like Chainsaw Chaney from FAMU, Nikai Hill Green from, from Charlotte. Uh, you bring in the young Garcia – you got you got uh, uh, Jaden Wester from uh, South Florida or Florida Atlantic. You got yeah. some guys who can really, really, really play at linebacker now, and some guys who put up some numbers last year where they were playing. Um, and I like a young freshman, Trent Hood. Also, we'll talk about him later on. But uh, what are you seeing from the linebackers, at least just in the workouts and stuff? Because they, if you ask anybody who played football, they'll say. Uh, where are the most athletic players on the on the field? And you're gonna have a lot of arguments, but a lot of people will say linebackers. Yeah, I, I think you. I think that's spot on because it's a hybrid. You know, uh, a linebacker is a, is a safety. He's got the intellect of a corner. Uh, he's got the strength of a D end. Just doesn't have the size of a of a, of a D lineman. So they're kind of hybrid of all the positions, and they're the extension of the coach out there on the field. Uh, it's going to be right. that middle linebacker, that safety, that's really viewing everything and getting everybody in the right places. One thing I love about Coach Hart's linebacker room uh, coming from, say, this time last year or as we walked off the field, you know, the last game, the depth. 
You got new bodies in there. Mm -hmm. You got the skill and talent, and they're pushing each other. I believe coming off the screen now that it's still a, a, a Jeremiah Brown, a JB's group. Because I think what he did in that spring game and what he was able to JB. do in the spring season, you know, say, okay, you know, all due respect to Bentley, all due respect to Trevor, I'm, I'm here. You inject some new blood now, and they're not conceding anything. So I'm looking forward to the challenges that's going to come when we get to fall ball, August camp, because some of those names you mentioned, uh, Makai Green, I mean, they, they're in the hood. They're not conceding anything. They want to play too. Uh, and so who's going to know the playbook? Uh, who's going to know the alignment, assignment, technique to best? Who's going to be in condition to stay out on the field more than anybody else? But the upside, Chico, which you didn't have last year is depth. Now you're going to be able to rotate some fresh bodies in and out. I think you're going to get more playing time from a diverse group because you got that kind of skill, talent, and ability that you didn't have last year. Yes, and I think that'll benefit the whole team, having those guys who can sub in uh, and, and excel at the different – uh, situations that they they are best in, like some guys who are, who are best at dropping in coverage, covering uh, in cover two or covering slots or curl routes or running backs out of the backfield and man coverage, whatever it is, we're going to put them guys in position to do that and do what they're best at uh, on the field rather than having them do some stuff just because it's a part of the defense. And a lot of people, if you don't realize out there, defense run plays too. They have assignments also. It's not, just not out there see the ball go get the ball everybody has assignments where they're supposed to be where they need to line up at and uh it's kind of like you're working on a rope everybody's connected on defense and uh, you have to be in the right position to make those plays and that's where a guy like trevor woods uh excelled at last year helping the guys up front in front of him be in the correct spaces to make those plays so we'll see who gets it this year and uh it's going a lot of talent out there and it's going to be a um, combination of the playbook and the on-field play for those linebackers. And I'll tell you this, man, in addition to that, with this depth at linebacker, their physical ability and their talent, look for them to make a lot of noise on special teams as well. Uh, you exactly. Know, it's, it's, it's one play where you give it all you got. You know, you might not have been in the game in this particular situation, but now you can get down the field, hit hard, make good things happen. I'm looking for some of those linebackers that you mentioned that if they're not schematically – you know, in downs one through three, for instance, they're going to be out there on fourth down and special teams are still making some noise. So you're going to hear a lot of those names that you heard, even if though they're not in the game, you know, first, second or third down. OK, uh, to wrap it up real quick, um, your coach prime update of the of the day or of the week, should I say, what's the coach prime update? How's he been? What's been going on with him? I saw him working out uh, actually on the field. With the guys. Oh, matter of fact, that was your post that said, Yeah, they say if you don't if you go to his camp, you won't see him. Yeah. They say if you see him, he won't speak. They say if he speaks, he won't coach you. <laughs> they wrong again about Coach Prime. That's what's posted by Uncle Neely. Tell us, break that down and tell us why you posted that. Well, man, a lot of folks, uh, even on the recruitment side, not just the camp side, they have this notion because Deion Sanders, the celebrity is a celebrity that sometimes that he is he he's distant from his players or you're not going to get to know him and have a relationship with him and the thing is furthest from the truth with his players but you also saw it saw it in the camps that he's hosted this week you know he's out there coaching these kids he's out there critiquing at the elite camp and getting folks better he's out there with the little kids you know instructing them so this dude is a hands-on leader a hands-on ceo he knows how to delegate and let people do what they're in charge of. But please don't think that he's up in some ivory tower and you can't talk to him, don't see him. He's a man amongst the people. He was out there with the kids and their families. And he was out there in the grass and he was coaching and showing people how to backpedal and, you know, what it means to get on top of a route and all those kind of things. So just wanted to point it out to people out there, particularly naysayers. Deion Sanders is involved. You see him, you hear him, you feel his presence. And the camps this week have been phenomenal. You know, there were scholarship offers from the elite camp, uh, the yep. youth camps, man, over two days. I'm talking, you know, 700 kids a day out there. Uh, it, it's just been a great presence, you know, this year with his camps on campus. And he is heavily involved and directly involved in the coaching and teaching. Bam. That's what it is, guys. Uh, Wednesdays with Warren just dropped. Uh, review on that. Uh, tell us about 
what we will see in that, or if anybody has watched it already, uh, can give us a, a summary of uh, what happened on Wednesdays with Warren. Well, man, we're going to always talk, you know, what's happening, you know, in Colorado football, much like you and I do, uh, bringing his Hall of Fame intellect and his experiences to the table. Also, we're going to talk a little basketball. You know, we we, we talk Celtics and Mavs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a good weekly series, man, for folks to get to know Warren Sapp. You know, you think you know him, but you have no idea. As Warren always says, you're going to hear me before you see me. You know, his, his personality is loud. His voice is loud and booming. Go check out Wednesdays with Warren. It drops every Wednesday on the pregame show network. It's been fun doing it with them, and we're not going to miss a Wednesday. It's going to be there. All right. That's what it is. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, we're gonna we're not going to miss a week. Y'all stay here and watch us also. Unc and Chico, we here, and we're coming in uh, throughout hey, this summer. Go win nowhere. Are we allowed to Take steal that. <laughs> Diddy songs? We can't do oh. Diddy songs, no, man. Dang, I just thought about that too, man. But I did watch the old Diddy and Mace uh, video the other day that uh, – uh, that song, no, no, no. What was the one? Uh, can't nobody take my pride. That right, yeah, can't yeah. hold me down. I just watched that the other day, man. I was like, yo, and Diddy man, and Mace had it on lock, man. As a man who loves women and as a father of daughters, Puffy was dead ass wrong for what went down that hotel. Having said yes. that, and man, when him and Mace was there, they they they, they, they were dropping they were dropping some hits, not Chico. They were oh dropping, my gosh, yeah. they were they were they were killing it. So, uh. It's just crazy that they broke up the way they did. But, hey, man, I think Mace might have saw something the yeah. way he saw it, and that's why he went to the went and yeah. took the route that he, I, I, he took. I love the Shadur, but we can't forget that Puffy didn't to put the rollie side to side. <laughs> way back then. Hey. <laughs> put the rollie side to side. <laughs> put the rollie up high, wave him side to side. That's yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, man. So, you know, prayers out to the man. I don't know what happened uh, other than, what we saw on video which was crazy as you said but you know if uh you know all the other allegations i don't know you know what i mean but hey like you said earlier though at the end of the day it's still no diddy dog no diddy, no diddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna end it on that man uncle chico we're gonna be up and about here y'all know what to do man leave a like subscribe comment all the other good stuff we're gonna keep coming we know it's new so you got to get used to it but we're gonna keep bringing it to you all right up and about this thing peace in the middle east yeah. You already know what it is. Unk and Chico, the best tag team on the internet, going live right now. Email us today to become an advertiser or presenting sponsor of Unk and Chico. Let's go.